Hey, folks. Can you guys hear me OK? Yes, 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 perfect. Hi. Uh, my name is Simeon Jung. I'm a program manager for the Office 365 core ecosystem team. And with me is Raju, also a program manager for core ecosystem. And together, we're, we're excited to show you some new features to Office 365 groups uh, to help you better connect with the 60 million Office 365 users. Just a quick heads up, this is a, actually a 50-minute session. We are combining the uh, six, uh, 602 and 618 sessions into one super session to really reveal the power of connectors. Uh, we've got some great demos to show you. Uh, we're even going to show you how easy it is to connect and create a connector of your own. And we have some shirts and uh, hoodies to give away at the end, so please stay tuned. Uh, we've got a, a Twitter prize uh, if you tweet your recommendation for the next new connector. So please stay the whole time. So. As you saw in Xi's keynote and Satya's keynote, conversations are really the new platform to engage with your users. And a delightful user experience really hinges on how well your service can connect and embed in your users' conversations. Conversations are the most natural and rich way for users to engage with your service. And we'll see a few examples of this later with our rich actions and reply gestures. With Office 365 connectors and the Skype developer platform SDKs, we're ensuring that your service is seamlessly woven into the communication platform and that you can engage and participate with your users in the most natural place, their conversations. At the heart of Office 365 connectors are the tools and the services that you use every day to get things done. Our goal is to give your users a single canvas to have their important conversations on and interact with your, convent, interact with your content right alongside their existing conversations. Some of your services have logical calls to actions on the notifications that you're sending to your users. And we want to make these actions even more seamless. So instead of having a context switch outside of your website or outside of the, the communication space, we're now giving your users the ability to take quick actions and interact with your site directly from their conversations. And as always, we're not here to flood your inbox with new notifications. Instead, we're offering connectors that are very tunable and configurable so that you only get the content that you and your users really need. So quick show of hands, how many of you are familiar with Office 365 groups today? So maybe like half. OK. Uh, so for those of you who haven't seen it before, I'll do a quick demo in a moment. Uh, but what you're seeing here are three screens of where groups are. And they're very pervasive today. They're across our Outlook desktop client, our OWA web experience, and the Outlook groups mobile apps. And with its shared conversation space, your group conversations are always up to date, and your team is always in sync. Connectors now give you a direct link to the sites and services that your team use every day. This way, all your discussions are managed in one place, so your team remains in sync. Cool. So let's do a quick demo. OK. So this is the group space today. And you'll notice that it has a shared conversation well along with a shared calendar, shared files, a shared OneNote notebook, and shared connectors. And when I click on connectors today, I'm brought to a catalog. And this catalog hosts over 60 partners today that are now closely coupled and, and configured into the Office 365 group space. So notifications from these services directly lead into the Office 365 conversation well. And these services range from a variety of, of productivity suites like task management, DevOps, bug tracking, social media. And we've done our best to configure them so that the notifications you're getting are only the important critical notifications that are important to your group conversations. Let's look at a few today. So here's Trello. Trello is a, a task management service. And I've configured this Trello instance to receive notifications anytime new cards or new members are attached to cards in the build conference board. And so when I snap over to my Trello board, you'll see that I've got a demo list and a build conference Trello board. And I can create new cards like And now that I've created this card, it's sending a message via webhooks to the Office 365 fabric. We're catching that and creating a message in the Office 365 conversation space. Come back to my conversations. You'll see a new activity. And I now have a Trello card that describes the activity. 
Let's look at a few more. We, we partnered with a service called User Voice. And User Voice is ideal for connecting with your customers and hearing about product suggestions or hearing about any feedback they're giving on the product. And so I've connected this User Voice to an account that I have. And I've got new suggestions for notifications here. So anytime a, a user suggests a new suggestion for my product, it'll create new connector cards in the conversation space. So let's go to User Voice. I'm going to create a new suggestion. So post a new idea. Create a new connector. I really want a new connector for my service. Let's make it for build. So likewise, I get a new activity in the group. And user voice has sent me another card that gives me another notification about the service. And you'll notice that some of these cards have action links at the bottom. And these are schema.org powered action links that deep link directly back into user voice. And so when I click on this, as an admin, I would jump directly into the user voice admin panel. And I could respond, uh, upvote, and, and interact with that content directly in user voice. Now, in the beginning, I promised uh, some t-shirts and sweatshirts to, to give away. And I'm going to now create a Twitter connector so I can view your tweets and figure out who to give uh, giveaways to. So I hope you're paying attention. Uh, I'm going to do a, a track for Office 365 connectors. And any of you who tweet at Office 365 connectors or include the hashtag Office 365 connectors with a suggestion for a new connector, uh, we've got some hoodies and t-shirts over here. So uh, at the end of the stage, uh, or at the end of the, uh, the session, feel free to, to come by and grab one. So I'm going to create this and have them come in as they arrive. Cool. And you'll see some new activity here. This is what we call a welcome message. And so now the entire group gets to see that I've created a connector following a specific hashtag. And so they know what to expect when new connectors or new connector messages come into the, the conversation space. A few more to show. Uh, there's a service called Just Reply. And it's a time tracking and, and uh, work management software. It lets you uh, just reply to email messages to track time. And they've built a connector in the matter of uh, about a week. And so we'll show you what this looks like. Here I've got a, a set of projects. And these projects can be interacted with and uh, replied back to, to to give time tracking. And so if I go back to my group conversation, I have a sample connector message from Just Reply. And it's asking the team to reply back to the email with a, uh, a notice on what project they've been working on and how long they've been working on it. And so I'll just click on the reply well into the conversation. And you'll notice a Just Reply email address is injected into the reply well. I can then reply with a little bit of a hint from the message. So hashtag billable is my project hashtag. So I'll type hashtag billable. And I'll say I worked on it for eight hours and fixed a bunch of bugs. And then click Send. And so now this reply that I sent in my Office 365 conversation is being sent to Just Reply. And they're able to catch it and then catalog the responses from all of the group members as work items inside Just Reply. So if I click on billable hours, I'll see that there's a new activity here. And fix the bunch of bugs in the description. The beauty of it is that in the group conversation well, we're all sharing the same conversation. So all the group members can reply back to this single thread with their own work updates. And they'll all be shared in both Just Reply and the conversation thread. So it makes Scrum, uh, makes Scrum management and task management incredibly easy and, and, and really delightful in the group space. Then in the task management space, we partnered with a great company called Meister Tasks. And they do a, a great task management suite. Let me show you their UI here today. Uh, under the, the new task pane, I can click on Actions. And they've included Office 365 as a notification path, which is using the same connector framework and webhook technology from before. I've already added it to this, this, uh, this task board. And so if I create a new item on it, like Hello Build 2016, 
And then when I go back to my conversation view, we'll get another reply from MeisterTask notifying the group that activity has happened on MeisterTask. So here's my reply. And there you see a card from MeisterTask. It's really, really powerful. And the, the real beauty shines when you have a two-way integration from your site to the Office 365 groups. And we partnered with Zendesk to really show how powerful that can be. Let me show you our Zendesk connector today. This is the config page for Zendesk. And you'll notice that there is a, a link here called Allow Escalations from Zendesk to be sent to this group. When you actually check mark this box, we're making an API call to the Zendesk fabric and installing a special add-in on the Zendesk side. Here in Zendesk, you'll notice an Escalate to Office 365 app has been installed. And any user who's uh, operating on a ticket can escalate their, their ticket to a special group, in this case, the Help Desk group. And so I've got a testing ticket here, and I want to escalate it to Help Desk. I'll click Submit. It's been escalated. And if I go back to the group mail, I've got new activity. And Zendesk has their own ticket here, with their, complete with their actions as well. And so there's a, a number of ways you can trigger these cards uh, for, uh, to push into the group. Some of them can be user-driven, like the Zendesk case, or automatically, like you saw in Twitter and Trello and MeisterTasks. Finally, I'd love to show you how easy it is to build a connector of your own. And so I'm going to go to something called the incoming webhook in the connectors menu. And this is the webhook technology that's powering all of these connectors today. The incoming webhook is a generic webhook that isn't tied to a specific company, and it's great for testing and, and mocking up your connector. So I'm going to add a new one called Build Webhook. I'll click Create. And I'm given a cut and pasteable webhook here that I'll go ahead and cut and paste, and then take it to Postman, which is my easy to use HTTP posting utility. I have a hello world JSON payload ready here. It's simple text equal hello world. And my headers are simply content type application JSON. I'll cut and paste it in and click send. So we get a 200 back, which says the message was received, a 1 in the payload. And if I go back to my group, I see hello world. And to show you a, a little bit more of a rich card, I'm going to include a slightly bigger payload here. And you'll see that it's got some uh, additional fields and additional sections. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit, uh, go over the details of the payload in a little bit. Yep, so we got a 200 and a 1 back. Click on New Activity. And now you'll see a richer card with actions. We've got some activities happening here, a set of facts, and some color. And now let's look at the uh, kind of anatomy of how to create this webhook request. Uh, OK, it looks like PowerPoint isn't going to cooperate immediately. Let me uh, quickly restart. So this is the curl request of what you just saw from Postman. It's just a simple hello world with a text string. And the card you're seeing below is, is very similar to what we created in the, the group uh, in the demo. And the webhook address is, is uh, obtainable both from the connector catalog, like you saw. I, I went to an incoming webhook and created a new webhook. Uh, but we also have a Connect Office 365 button that lets users program and uh, configure webhooks directly from third-party sites. And Raju will walk through the, uh, the publishing and anatomy of that in just a moment. Uh, in our payload, we have a notion called sections. And sections are a, a stackable, extensible content piece that allows for rich content in the cards. And so we, we noticed that a lot of notifications from services include avatars and titles. And so we've had an activity image, activity title, activity text here to create a little bit more of a rich message about build. But we also found that we want to be able to decorate and add links and add richer content to these cards. And so we're going to add a little bit of markdown. So you'll see the text field now contains a little bit of markdown to create a link for Hello World. And I've getting, included uh, some asterisks to do bolding on my name and some italics on the text. We also support schema.org actions. And so you'll see uh, in the potential action field of the schema, 
we have a schema.org view action. And this is creating a, a deep link button inside the cards. And these are supported both in the, the web and in mobile. So if you include the iOS or Android deep links, we'll open the apps directly from our mobile experience as well. So just to recap, connectors are the easiest way to connect and engage with your users uh, to give them rich content. Our action structure supports deep linking into apps and services, and we've built rich actions like the reply gesture that you saw to create uh, messages just in a, to create content directly in a just reply. They're also incredibly quick to build. Uh, it's a simple webhook standard that's widely adopted, and the, uh, the webhook address is as easy as sending a, a post to an, an HTTP endpoint. You can use our connector card format to create rich messages that interact uh, uh, very fluidly and flawlessly with your users. And we take care of the UX for you. So you don't have to worry about sending responsive HTML or uh, modifying things for mobile. It's all done for you. And finally, we make it incredibly easy for users to configure it from any configuration flow, whether they're on the Office 365 Fabric groups view and configuring from our fabric, or embedding buttons like the Connect Office 365 button in your flow. It's incredibly easy for a user to connect. Now, again, uh, if you have your phones out, uh, feel free to send a tweet to hashtag Office 365 Connectors uh, with a suggestion on what connectors you want to see next. Uh, and we've got sweatshirts and t-shirts to give out at the end. And with that, I'll hand it off to Raju to show you how to build your own connector and publish it to our Thanks, Simeon. Now that we got an overview of connectors, let's look at how to go and build one. Building a connector is extremely easy. It just takes three simple steps. So to begin with, I build a connector using incoming webhooks that Simeon just dem demonstrated. It's the best way to prototype your connector. It lets you focus on the core scenarios, such as designing your connector cards, putting the right calls to action, and allowing you your users to subscribe to the right notifications. Once you're done with that, you go ahead and add a Connect to Office 365 button. A Connect button makes it extremely easy for you, your users to go and set up your connector. And once you're done with that, you go ahead and distribute your connector by publishing it in the connector store. For the purpose of this demo, I have built a bare bones application called Eventzilla. Eventzilla is an event listing portal where organizers can create events and sell tickets. And users can go ahead and discover events and subscribe to the events that they really care about. Office 365 has over 60 million enterprise monthly active users. As a developer, Building a connector allows me to tap into this vast user base. So everything that you need to build a connector is available in this one single portal. Yep, that's good. So you can go ahead to to dev.outlook.com, where all the developer documentation related to connectors is available. You can head on to the connectors section. You would see a quick overview of connectors available here, getting started, about learn about the payload formats, and even go ahead with building your own connector. So in here, I see a sandbox environment. So I go ahead to the sandbox environment. So it looks something like this. Sandbox, the connector sandbox is a cool way for you to iterate on your connector card. So you can go ahead and like put your connector card payload here and quickly see a preview. So you don't have to wait for like, uh, you don't have to write a single line of code to iterate on the design of your connector card. So in here, you see that I have worked on a connector card, which is like a simple card that would be sent out to my users every time an organizer goes and adds a new event in Eventzilla. So I have made the best use of like Markdown to provide links. I can even use it to enrich my text. Uh, using the markdown. I also have very clear calls to action, asking my users to buy tickets or join the conference online. Also, I have went ahead and added a user-facing page where all my users can come here and uh, subscribe to the uh, notifications that they really care about using incoming webhooks. So note that I have also provided additional filter options for my users, allowing them to choose from the type of events that are available they can also narrow down on like what are the categories of events that they want to uh, actually listen upon. So I'll show a quick demo of like uh, using incoming webhooks and create a notification. I head into my group. There's a contest of product group that is available here. I go to the connector session. I use incoming webhooks.
I go and give the uh, name of the application and upload a logo. And once I create the webhook, I copy this URL, take it to my user-facing configuration page, and paste it here. So I, I would love to listen on all the events about new events, especially of category technology. So I go ahead and save my configuration. Once I've saved my configuration, every time uh, event organizer goes and adds an event, I would get a notification directly into my group. So this is the uh, event organizer facing page. I go ahead and like add an uh, event for build conference. I provide the necessary information, like the title, the event URL, some dates. I also provide a logo for my event. And I choose the category of the event to be technology. And I provide a live streaming link for this event. When I go ahead and publish the event, all that this form does is like does a HTTP post directly onto the webhook URL that we, the user provided. So when the user goes back to his group, he would be able to see the connector card that I designed directly in his uh, group. So now, now that we have prototyped the connector, I can I have my beta users go and directly test it out by uh, following the same steps. They go out and create their own incoming webhooks and go and subscribe to my notifications. Once I have prototyped, got the feedback from my users, iterated, up, iterated upon my design, I can go and make it even more simpler for my users to configure a connector. So to do that, I go to the developer portal. All the documentation for the dev uh, is available in dev.outlook.com again. So I go and click visit the connector developer portal. So if you have an Office 365 login, you can directly go to the developer portal, which is at outlook.office.com slash connector slash publish. If you don't already have an Office 365 account, you can register for a free one-year trial. So to register my connector, all that I need to do is go ahead and add a new connector and provide some basic metadata about my connector. So I provide the connector name, provide a logo, and provide the additional details, such as like the events that I support. So for the demo, I have already registered my connector, Evenzilla. So in here, you'd be able to see Details such as like the short description about my app, the detailed description about what the connector does, and all the events that I support. These information would be available to my end users when they're trying to configure the connector. So once I provide all this information and save it, I would have a HTML snippet generated on the right-hand side. So this is the snippet for the connect button. All I need to do is copy the URL, go back into my code, and replace the input for incoming webhook with the connect button. So I have my connect button added here. So uh, once I do this, all my users would be able to go back to the portal now. And they would see a button of this sort. To configure the connector, all they need to do is like, click on the connect button and authorize a group with their Office 365 credential. So I'll quickly demonstrate how the connect button works by inspecting the request and response URLs. So when a user clicks on the connect button, so the user is directed to a connect, connect group picker page available in Office 365. Carefully note that the query parameter has like an app ID, which is like a unique identifier for my application. And there is also a callback URL that I provided during the registration of my application. When the user selects a group and clicks on allow, the group picker redirects back to my callback URL with the group name as well as the webhook URL in query parameters. So all I need to do is take the group pick, uh, the, uh, pick the group name as well as the webhook URL from the query parameters and persist it in backend. So I have done that, and my, my, the, the user's group is connected to my product now. And all I need to do is go ahead and like, select the appropriate category and save the configuration. So we have done away with the hassles of asking the user to generate a webhook and manually copy and paste it. Now I head back into the uh, event organizer view and go ahead and create the same event. So I provide the same details. I, I provide a logo for my event and pick the same category as technology. I also provide the direct streaming link for my event. And when I click on Make My Event Live, 
the connector card gets directly posted onto my group, you would notice that like I have my connector card available, and I have made it extremely easy for my users to go and connect to my product. So. And an additional perk of going and registering your connector at the developer portal is, instead of seeing the incoming webhook branding, you would see your own branding. So I, I, you would see the Evanzilla branding for this connector. So these are the actions that I provided at the time of setup. So users can click on this, go directly to the site and buy tickets for the build conference, or they can click on join online and directly watch a live stream of the application. So at this stage, my connector is like completely ready, and it's ready to ship. So I want my users to be able to discover my connector. So all I need to do is go back to the developer portal, get into my connector, and I have an option to publish it to store. When I click on Publish to Store, a very simple form opens up. I fill the contact information and other basic details about my connector. Once I do that, I, I, I also provide the detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how the connectors team can test my connector. So uh, the submission is, uh, goes to the connectors validation team. They would take a week or so to test your connector. Once your connector is tested and approved, it would be uh, available in the connector catalog, which is available directly within the group. So your connector would show up here with the Add button, just like all the other uh, 66 connectors that are available here. It would also be surfaced on store.office.com from where like, users would be able to discover and configure your connectors. So I'll quickly recap on how you go about building a connector. I showed you how to prototype a connector using incoming webhooks. Incoming webhook is the easiest way to prototype your connector. Once you have prototyped your connector and got the necessary feedback and iterated upon your connector, you go ahead and add a connect button. Adding a connect button makes it extremely easy for your users to go and configure your connector. And once you have built your complete connector completely, you go ahead and publish it to the connector catalog and store using the publish to store option available to get discovered by millions of Office 365 users. Thanks, Simeon. Over to you. Yeah. So this is the, uh, the, our newest partners. Uh, we've actually launched all 15 of these in the last three weeks. And all of them were able to create, configure, and publish a connector with, uh, with less than two weeks uh, of dev time. And so it's really the fastest, easiest way to connect your service to the 60 million Office 365 users. For our roadmap, we're looking at getting connectors in the inbox. And so today, they're, they're a groups feature, but we're also seeing that a lot of connectors make a lot of sense to bring to your personal inbox as well. And so you'll see that coming in the, in the next uh, coming months. And we're also looking at expanding on our, our actions on the messages. So you saw the reply. You saw the reply gestures, and uh, we're looking at potentially more richer actions to take on messages. Uh, the connector catalog for desktop Outlook and Groups mobile apps is coming soon as well. Right now, it's available in the Groups OO experience, and you'll see it in the coming months in both the Groups mobile apps as well as desktop Outlook. And then we're looking at not just a one-size-fits-all for our card design, but also improving specific experiences for things like news digests, rich media like video links and image links to really show your content in a beautiful and, and rich way. Just to do some best practices if you're looking at developing one of your own, uh, we highly encourage using Markdown to configure the look and feel of your connector cards. And whenever possible, try to keep those actions in schema.org format. That lets us uh, make them flawlessly uh, simple to use on both mobile and web, and lets us deep link directly in your application if we're in mobile contexts. If you're sending any kind of reports or summaries, uh, be sure to digest the information, because the inbox gets a little bit noisy if you send too many notifications. So ensure that you also have a configuration settings on your site to remove or edit the configuration settings uh, for the connector. And then we have a, a related session happening at 3.30. Uh, a colleague of mine, Shiva Kumar uh, Sitharaman, is giving a great session on both the Skype SDKs and the connector platform. Be sure to check that out in the Marriott Salon 7. And then there's only one website you need to remember to develop a connector. It's dev.alloc.com. Uh, you have all of our documentation, links to our sandbox, links to our publishing portal, all on dev.alloc.com. And for any issues, feel free to report them at hashtag Office365Connectors. Well, thank you guys very much. Uh, Q&A is now. And I've, I've been looking at the Twitter feeds as I was sitting there and saw a ton of uh, great new suggestions for uh, uh, new connectors. Uh, 
ranging from, from Twitch to uh, uh, things like the build conference schedule as well. So when you're uh, done uh, with Q&A, feel free to come by and grab a hoodie as well. All right. Well, thank you guys.